Hello friends, welcome back to the shop. Today is Sunday, July 18th, and it is a hot and steamy day here in southeastern Pennsylvania. We've had a lot of rain, it's hot, it's humid, it's all that good stuff. Feels like I'm in a in a tropical jungle when I walk outside. But uh, hey, what are you gonna do? That's why we have air conditioners, right? Smoking um, Carter Hall in a Missouri Meerschaum country gentleman, a rather old country gentleman that I have enjoyed for many years. And some 8 o'clock coffee. The three C's, Carter Hall, Corn Cob, and Coffee. No better way to start the day. Uh, so, there's been a lot of, um, and I, I, I referenced this a little bit on Wednesday, there's been a lot of stupid going around. There's been a lot of people yelling, people typing things that are obnoxious and mean, and people yelling because of that, and yeah, it just, it's uncomfortable. It's uncomfortable, and it doesn't help. Uh, you know, there's, I kind of see, the, yeah, everybody sees two categories of everything. I kind of see two categories of these rant videos. You know, there's ones where the guy's got a, a, an actual honest thing that he's upset about, and he wants to tell you about it. And that's okay. You know, that's, that's, that's fine. And then there's the sort of clickbait rant, like, oh, I'm mad, and I'm going to tell you why. And, eh, you know, <laughs> it's, and, and, and it's not, it's not really valid. That those I don't like, and they both create tension, and then people say, oh, yeah, I agree 100%, that stinks, and then before you know it, you've got factions, and factions are never good. You know, we're pipe smokers, for God's sake, we're, we're pipe smokers, that's, that's it. You know, we shouldn't be, we shouldn't be playing Axis and Allies <laughs> within the pipe smoking world. We don't need to do that. I don't know if you guys played Axis and Allies. We used to play that. We used to play Cops and Robbers. When I moved down south, I found out they actually played North and South, which was interesting. Um, we didn't play that up north. Anyway, I digress. So, I was thinking the other day as I was reading some comments and kind of mulling things over, I was thinking about uh, several years ago, there was a Christmas slideshow that was put together, and unfortunately I don't remember the presenter's name that did this, but he put out a call for everybody in the community, and of course not everybody did it, but a lot of people did it. Send me a picture of you smoking a pipe, period. Yeah, it can be Christmassy, it doesn't have to be, just a picture of you, no names, nothing. And he made this beautiful video of uh, Christmas music with just picture fading into picture fading into picture and there had to be a hundred pictures there I, I didn't count but you know it was a lot but it was a lot and I watched this thing and I was so touched by it not because it was Christmas not because I saw friends there I didn't recognize most of these people you know because they were just names and there were no names associated these are people that just would type a comment and you know that but this is a picture of them and I don't know them but there they are and they're smoking their pipe and I'm watching this and I'm thinking my goodness if you got all these people together in a room they wouldn't talk to one another we had people from every walk of life we had people of every race we had people of every creed People that looked the same, people looked very different. These people are not your typical club. You know, it's not, it's not a group that would, that would naturally fall together. But you go into that room and you put a pipe in their hands, and suddenly they're all friends. And that is one of the most wonderful things about what I'm holding in my hand right now. That is one of the most wonderful things about what happens here on YouTube. 
Now, it just flat out disgusts me that people would take that same pipe and use it to drive wedges between people. To make someone feel like they're, they're less a member of the group. To make them feel unimportant. To make them feel like their opinion isn't valid. To make them feel unwelcome. Or that the work they do is not up to par. This is not good. You know, this is not what this is about. There's enough of that in other aspects of the world. This is a place we come to to get away from that crap and, and to enjoy a pipe and to enjoy one another's company. And that's it. That's really it. Now, apparently some folks think you need to have a certain level of credentials in order to hold an opinion on pipes or pipe smoking. and That's utter nonsense. What are you going to do? Um, but let me tell you where I'm coming from, just so that you have some idea of, you know, where my opinions come from. And so that those folks that think you need to be credentialed uh, understand that I'm not just some idiot that is making stuff up here. And there's plenty of idiots that make stuff up on YouTube. So I've been smoking a pipe for well over 30 years. I stopped counting, but I know it's, it's over 30 years. I've had many, many pipe smoking friends outside of YouTube now and pipe smoking mentors. And these were people from all walks of life. These were guys that worked hard every day until the day they retired. These were guys that were lawyers. Yeah, broad spectrum. And I've learned something from all of them over the last 30 plus years. I've smoked pipes across the spectrum. I've smoked the cheapest basket pipe you can imagine. I've smoked the <clears throat> expensive factory pipes, the Dunhills, the Costellos, the Radices. I've smoked the affordable factory pipes, the Savinelli's, Rossi's, uh, Brigham's, Peterson. Uh, and I know Peterson crosses that line at times. I, you know, these aren't hard lines. I've smoked many artisan pipes. I've repaired all of them, you know, across the board. And I've taken advantage of the fact that I can handle many examples of these things to measure them, to study them, to try to understand how pipes smoke, how one pipe might be different from another. And of course, I smoke corn cobs. I don't sell pipes in any of those brackets. I got no ulterior motive here or no horse in the race. I do repair pipes and, you know, take that for what it is, full disclosure, but. I don't think what I'm about to say is in any way going to impact on repair of pipes. So, so let's let's begin. And well, before we begin, you probably noticed the intro to this, where I had the little cartoon of the the two guys, and and that comes from an article by Kevin Godby that was published back in uh, 2012 and I'll link to that below. I highly recommend that you read that article. The title of the article is Snobbery is a Snobbery Does and it talks about snobbery in the pipe world in both directions. The guys that only smoke the high-end pipes and they look down on anybody that doesn't have the ability to appreciate these wonderful uh, pipes that they smoke. And the guys that smoke nothing but corn cob pipes, and they look at the guys smoking the high end pipes and think, "Why are you wasting your money, you idiot?" It 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 looks at both sides of that. It's an excellent article. 
uh, wait, as soon as you're done this video, go, go and read Kevin Godby's article. The link will be below. Now, to really talk through this, i got to make a few definitions. I want to get us all on the same page. And I'm actually going to try to define these different categories of pipes for you. Uh, at least in a way that allows me to talk about them, okay? So, you've got artisan pipes, all right? And these are kind of a category unto themselves, as you can see here on the screen. Artisan pipes are made from start to finish by one person. Um, I want to say one guy, but there's very good female uh, pipe makers, so one person. That person looks at every square millimeter of that pipe and guarantees that it meets the quality standards that he or she has set for themselves before it goes out to their customer. That is one of the main values. That is the main value in an artisan pipe. One person doing that, doing their best, and, and not selling it to you until they believe it is their best. That's an artisan pipe. That's an artisan maker. And importantly, they own the business. So you buy an artisan pipe, the money that you spend goes into that person's pocket. It puts food on that person's table. That, to me, is one of the really key aspects of an artisan pipe or an artisan pipe maker. And then you got factory pipes, which is everything else. You know, anything that doesn't fit that category is a factory pipe. You know, um, now, folks will argue, oh, well, you know, Dunhill is a little bit different. No, it's a factory. It's got workers in it. The money goes to somebody else, the Dunhill family in this case. Uh, and it doesn't matter if there's, you know, four or five people working in the factory or 400 people working in the factory. It's a factory. You don't get that start to finish. One guy guaranteeing the quality. And when you buy it, the money does not go to the guy that made the pipe. So that's that's kind of the way I'm thinking about these two broad categories. And then we can further break those categories down. And this is arbitrary, but I'm just doing it by price because that's the easiest thing to do. So if you look at artisan pipes, you got expensive artisan pipes. And I'm just arbitrarily saying anything greater than $500 falls into that expensive category. Now you can think of the famous artisan maker, you know, folks like uh, Tom Eltang or former um, uh, you can think of some of the, the newer uh, but very good pipe makers, guys like uh, Jeff Grasick. And you can think of some of the guys that we know here on YouTube that, that are getting into that category, folks like Jay Mouton or Phil Rivera. Uh, you know, depending on the pipe, they, they can certainly go into that category. Then you've got the more average category, artisan pipes. And, and this, is, this is where I tend to live. You know, this is the $250, $300 range, roughly. You know, maybe you'll get a deal for $200. Uh, I'm sorry, that's wrong. That should say $250 to $500. <laughs> oh, well. I'm not going to start the video over to fix that. So $250 to $500 range. And then you've got what I'm going to call the, the uh, affordable. You know, the less than $250 range. Now, this, the, the, the average range there doesn't mean that the quality is average. The quality is quite good. These are folks that have really refined their craft, and they're doing an excellent job making pipes. They just don't have the name yet, you know. So I mentioned Jay Mouton and Phil Rivera starting to kind of skirt into that expensive category and some cases actually get in there. Uh, that's because they're getting known. They're getting that name, and they deserve it. You know, it's well-deserved. You got other guys that are just starting out. They haven't yet learned their craft, but it's expensive to make a pipe. So it's completely understandable that they'd want to sell what they make as long as they believe that it's good quality. And they're not going to be able to charge you $300 for that. It's, it's going to be less expensive. So you got to understand that categorization. And when you look at person X that's selling a pipe for $100, you can't assume that person Y is going to be able to do the same thing. It's just not... It, it just doesn't make sense because you, you're dealing with three different things here. Same can be said about factory pipes. You got expensive factory pipes. And I'm, again, arbitrarily saying these are more expensive than $200. I'm just making numbers up here just to give you some idea of how I'm thinking about it. 
So here you're going to have, and, and they can go much higher than that. You know, 200 is the cutoff. They can go much higher, as can the expensive artisan pipes go much, much higher. Things like Dunhills, Costellos. These are, you know, well-made pipes. They got a name on them, and they sell for a, a, a fair amount of money. And the folks that buy them believe that they're worth spending that money on, and that's good. Then you got the average, again, not average quality, just average price range here. And this could be anything from, you know, seven, 75 to $200, somewhere in that range. And here I'm thinking of things like Savinelli, uh, Most Peterson, Brigham, Rossi, you, you know, that, that range of factory pipes where you're getting a good quality pipe, pretty good quality control most of the time. And, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's that price. And then you got affordable. And by affordable, I mean anything less than $75. Here you're going to have your basket pipes. Uh, some companies like Brop uh, make a lot of these. Um, uh, Mr. Brog. Uh, corn cobs fall under this category. Okay. It's just a vocabulary. It does, none of these are bad. These are all perfectly fine pipes. And that's kind of the main point of what I'm going to talk about for the, for the rest of this. All right, so there's been uh, discord in the community, and there's some questions that I want to talk about. Not answer, but talk about. And you'll recognize these questions because they have been the source of discord in the community. So do corn cob pipes smoke as well as expensive factory pipes? You know, it's people that strongly believe that's true. There's other people that strongly disagree with that. Do expensive factory pipes, the Dunhills and the Costellos, smoke better than the more affordable factory pipes, the Savinelli's, the basket pipes? And finally, do artisan pipes smoke better than factory pipes? And I guess a corollary to that is, is the extra money you're paying on an artisan pipe worth the extra cost? So those are the questions. The problem is, these are not valid questions in any way. They're simply not valid questions. The reason is, pipes don't smoke. They don't. You smoke. The pipe smoker smokes the pipe. The pipe doesn't smoke. So saying this pipe smokes better than that pipe is not valid. You smoke the pipe. And when you smoke the pipe, you find that it smokes better than another pipe. That's just logic, you know. This is a tool. This is a tool to burn tobacco. Nothing more. Now, these tools have evolved over the past hundred plus years. So if you go back, and, and I, I went through this in, in my blog, I actually have a whole series that I haven't finished simply because I don't think anybody was reading it and it was taking a lot of work. Uh, but I kind of traced the history of pipes and how pipes are engineered, uh, how that engineering has evolved. And the series was called What is a Pipe? You can, you can find it on my blog if you're interested. You can get to that through my website. The first people to smoke tobacco actually smoked it in the ground. They dug a hole, they put some hot embers in the, in the hole, they put tobacco on top of it, they covered it up, they poked a hole, and they literally laid on the ground and breathed the smoke in. Later on, Somebody figured out they could stick a reed in there. It became a communal thing. Make a bigger hole, everybody sticks the reed in. Then somebody got the brilliant idea of using clay to make a portable hole. 
It's been said many times by many folks, a pipe is two holes surrounded by stuff. That's it. That's it. There's nothing magical about it. It's two holes, a tobacco chamber, and a draft hall, an airway, surrounded by stuff. And the stuff isn't important. The stuff is aesthetically important. The stuff might be important in terms of durability. It might be important in terms of comfort. So the stem material may be more or less comfortable. The shape of the stem might be more or less comfortable. A clay pipe cannot be held in your hand. It gets too hot. So a briar pipe is more comfortable because you can hold it in your But in terms of the engineering, in terms of the ability to burn tobacco and get the smoke of that tobacco into your mouth, there really are no differences. Now, very early on, pipes evolved to have a straight um, one eighth inch, roughly, hole. If you look at a clay pipe, it's got a straight, you know, perfectly, what am I trying to say here? Uniform diameter all the way down airway. And they smoke just fine. When people started thinking about comfort, you know, they didn't want these round stems anymore. They wanted something that they could hold in their mouth, clench. They had to compress that. So the airway could not be the same diameter here, here, as it is down here. Thus, you had to have a tapered airway but you wanted to keep a constant volume. So you taper it, but you funnel it, so you widen it out. So now you've got it spread out in this direction and compressed in this direction, but it's still a uniform volume, uniform cross-sectional area, airway that goes all the way through. That hasn't changed. And all this stuff about you know, airway engineering and everything, that's it. That's everything you need to know about it. Now, yes, people spend their whole lives trying to perfect it. I get it. And that's good because we get great pipes. But don't tell me that just because the airway is, is a little bit smoother or funneled a little bit better, that a pipe smokes 10 times better than another pipe. The pipe doesn't smoke. The pipe smoker smokes. What you're really saying is this pipe requires less skill. This pipe is easier to smoke. But if you've been smoking... 10, 20, 30 years, and you've been smoking across the spectrum, corn cob pipes, Dr. Grabo's, Savinelli's, Costello's, you learn how to smoke the pipes. You learn to change your cadence. You learn how to pack to compensate for differences. And it just becomes second nature. So all this talk about, you know, all the pipe engineering, is it, it, it's not that big of a deal, you know? Most, in fact, I'm going to say all factory pipes, unless there's something just catastrophically wrong, you know, we just completely misdrilled the bowls, you know, quarter inch lower than the airway. Uh, there's a huge air pocket in the, in, in, the, in the mortars. Unless something like that happens, you're going to be able to smoke the pipe if you know how to smoke a pipe. It's that simple. Everything else is just decoration. All right, so if that's the case, then why would I ever spend money on a high-end, expensive factory pipe? Why would I ever spend money on a expensive artisan pipe? Well, excuse me, I'm going to get my tamper here. Actually, I need an ashtray because my pipe is now empty. I've said in previous videos, and this, this is now opinion. This is me talking. I've said in previous videos that I don't want to buy any more factory pipes. I've got enough. I've been through the gauntlet. I've pretty much sampled what that industry has to offer. I've made my decisions that... There's not very much of a difference between how a Dunhill smokes and how a Savinelli smokes. Dunhill might look nicer. Dunhill might make me feel like I'm... Yeah, it might be a status symbol. It might make me feel better about myself because I bought a Dunhill. But it doesn't smoke differently for me than a Savinelli because I know how to smoke both of them. 
And the same is true for any expensive factory pipe. So if I were to buy another factory pipe, it would probably be a Savinelli um, or something in that range. Uh, Peterson has, in my opinion, significant quality control issues. I wouldn't buy a Peterson. But by the way, there are significant quality control issues at the upper end, too. Uh, you know, I fix a lot of Radice's and Costello's because the tenons snap easily. They get very snappy acrylic tenons. And their drilling is all over the place. There's no consistency in, the, in their drilling. So, you know, quality control is not is not solely the domain of the, 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 the expensive pipes. Savinelli is pretty good quality control compared to, to many of the others. So if I was to buy another factory pipe, it would be a Savinelli, but I'm not going to because I've got enough pipes. I don't need pipes. I don't need another pipe ever. But I like buying pipes. So I'm not going to buy a factory pipe. I'm going to buy an artisan pipe. You know why? the two reasons I put in my definition of artisan pipe. I know that pipe has been crafted by a guy that cares about it, that, that puts time into it, that looks at every, every bit of that pipe and makes sure that it meets his standards. And that, that's worth it to me. That's worth spending three, four, five hundred dollars to me. Secondly, that money is putting food on that guy's table. That money is allowing that guy to buy more prior, is allowing him to uh, buy better equipment. To me, that's important. I want to support that artisan. That's why I buy artisan pipes. Not because I need a status symbol, not because I think it'll, you know, a $500 pipe is going to smoke five times better than a $100 pipe. No, I'm going to be able to smoke them both equally well. It's not the pipe, it's the smoker. So the next time somebody tells you your corn cob pipe doesn't smoke well, tell them they just don't know how to smoke it. If the pipe is structurally sound, if the engineering is within the average range, and if you know what you're doing, you're going to enjoy smoking that pipe. All right, so hopefully that clears up some misconceptions that hopefully will make people that enjoy smoking corn cobs feel like they are just as much a part of this community as people that only smoke 69 Everson, uh originals we're all pipe smokers guys we're all in that big room that i described at the beginning so what can we do what, what can we do to kind of get past this and and get back to just being friends and enjoying our pipes well number one check your ego recognize that every single one of us myself included, every one of us is completely irrelevant in the world. We are a tiny, tiny part of a tiny hobby. There aren't that many pipe smokers in the world, and we represent maybe a fraction of a percent of them. Okay? We're irrelevant. Every single one of us. There are no pipe gods. There are, there are no authority figures in pipe smoking. There are guys that can help you. There are guys that can teach you. There are, you might be able to help someone else. I've learned things from guys that have 20 subscribers. Okay? The subscriber count is, is unimportant. If you, if you really want to know the impact of somebody, the impact of some video, do this. Go, go to someone's channel. You, you think somebody is, is impactful. Fine. Go to their channel. Pick a random video, or pick five random videos. Average the, the number of views. Okay? That's important, the number of views. And then divide it by the number of subs. That's interesting if you do that. That gets really interesting because that gives you an idea of the impact of that video. Okay? There are no pipe gods. There's just people smoking pipes in that big room. Ah... Uh, Think before you type or rant. You know, keep that big room in mind. 
if I was at a party of pipe smokers and I had something to say, would I get in the corner and stand up on a chair and say, hey, listen to me? Would I go gather around a group of people and, and point and say, hey, that guy over there? Or would I walk up to the guy and say, you know, I don't really agree with that. Let's talk about it. I don't understand why your pipes cost so much. Let's talk about it. You'll learn. You'll better understand another person. You'll make a friend. Think before you type or rant. If you make videos, don't make these clickbait rants where you're, you're just looking to inflame things. Don't add fuel to the fire. Sometimes we've got a, a justifiable reason to get on here and say, I'm mad. Sometimes. A lot of the time, we're just stroking our own egos. And I'm guilty of that, too. Keep in mind, we're burning tobacco here. We're not performing organ transplant surgery. Keep that in mind when you're making your video. And finally, if you see somebody acting badly, call them out on it. Don't make it worse. Don't, you know, yeah, I agree 100% with you. Or if you see somebody in the comments saying, boy, what an idiot, and you don't agree, say, hey, why don't you get in touch privately? Why don't you send the guy an email? Why don't you email me and we can just chat about it? Don't argue back. Don't make it worse. It doesn't help. Keep that big room in mind. Keep that Christmas video in mind. Because, guys, that's what we're all about. You know, we're all about pipes and pipe tobacco. Doesn't matter how much it costs. Doesn't matter what the name is on the side. I've got a lot of good friends here just because we all enjoy this, no matter which shape or form it takes. And I appreciate it greatly. And I hope that you all uh, got something from this and can continue to appreciate one another. All right, folks, with that, um, this has run long, but I had a lot to say. I hope you appreciate it. hope you understand it. I'm going to let you all get on with your weekend. You have a great week, and I look forward to talking to you all again very soon. Bye-bye now.